I want to uh, stick with the markets now and bring in our guest, John Petridis. He is Portfolio Manager at Tocqueville Asset Management. Always good to see you, John. Uh, so what do you make of the fact that we're uh, continuing that November momentum into December? A lot of people thought this market was going to take a big breather here. I know one day does not a month make, but what are your initial thoughts on the rally today? Well, I think what investors have to be really excited about and comfortable with is the breadth of the rally. I mean, November was more of a, uh, although all stocks did well, you really saw cyclicals uh, take the lead, uh, industrials, financials, uh, because we've been driven by technology for most of the year. So the fact that other sectors participated in the rally in November was a good sign to see. But now, if you see, the NASDAQ is the best performing of the three major indices. So it's everything is rallying today on, on the back of a lot of good headline news, whether it's the vaccine, uh, Congress and a fiscal package, um, and, and clearly the Fed, uh, you know, um, Powell's comments yesterday, you know, basically mean that the Fed is going to stay accommodative for longer. All right. You know, earlier today, I'm sure you're aware, President-elect Joe Biden was speaking in Wilmington, Delaware, um, at an event where he unveiled his economic team, among them former Fed Chief Janet Yellen, who would become, if confirmed, the first female Treasury Secretary of the U.S. And um, I want you to listen to what he had to say, and then, and then I'm going to ask you to respond. To the United States Senate, I hope those outstanding, these outstanding nominees will receive a prompt hearing and that we will be able to uh, work across the aisle in good faith and move forward as one country. So let's begin the work to heal, to unite, to rebuild an economy for all Americans. What do you make of, uh, of his slate of folks on the economic team? Are these people who you think are, I guess, neutral enough, bipartisan enough that they're going to be able to sail through nominations? I think there's a bigger question of, you know, Biden is going back from his experience under the uh, Obama administration where, you know, basically the Republican controlled Congress and Senate would stonewall just about anything that President Obama and his administration tried to pass through. So he's hoping that uh, I think while the Republicans have the majority in the Senate up until the runoff, that there's not a repeat of that. Uh, I, I think that's the the, the, the the fear that that we don't go back to where we were and you know, 2012, 13, and 14. So, uh, but but in terms of the credentials of all the candidates, uh, you know, they all appear very strong uh, within their respective fields. You know, Yellen is really interesting because, uh, you know, in one way she has clearly the experience of being a former Fed governor now running the Treasury, so, uh, or potentially running the Treasury. So she would be, you know, in lockstep with Powell because they'd be thinking in a similar line. But on the other hand, there is, you know, that lack of checks and balance where, you know, having two people, you know, or two institutions coming from the same pedigree, you know, not having that to offset uh, a slightly different, um, you know, angle that the Fed would be coming at. So, you know, I, I'm a bit mixed in terms of the, uh, the, the, the strategic side of things with Yellen as a uh, potential se uh, secretary of Treasury. We know that Yellen was a, a dovish Fed chair. And looking ahead to the market in 2021 now, especially with her role in the Biden administration, you say we need to look out for possibly rising inflation in the new year, which could lead to, lead to higher interest rates. I think you're in the minority here. Tell us why you, you see higher inflation. And do you really think that's going to force the Fed's hand? So there, there's a couple of things. I, I think the market gets complacent with the Fed saying they're not going to raise interest rates until 2023, 2024. That's true. I don't foresee the Fed coming off of 0% on interest rates, but that doesn't mean that the Fed will not walk back off its quantitative easing. And we could have a repeat of two, the May of 2013 uh, when Bernanke simply made the comment that the Fed was going to taper its asset purchase program. We had the famous taper tantrum where bonds sold off uh, seven to ten percent over about a five-month period. Uh, you know, if a stimulus package gets through, and, and we get a vaccine that starts to get distributed to the masses, and we condense this social distanced economy that we're living in, and interest rates right now, re, re, the Fed remains uh, accommodative, uh, you, and, and corporate America is doing really well from an earnings standpoint relative to expectations, you could have the economy rip. 
And you don't need the Fed to raise interest rates. You just need the market to start expecting inflation to be higher than it currently is. And I think right now the market, at least in the bond market, seems to be pricing that inflation is going to be dead for a very long time. I mean, how else do you explain you know, the U.S. 30-year bond trading under 2% yield? Yeah, think about that. So over 30 years, if you bought the U.S. Treasury, you'd have less than a 2% yield over the next 30 years. I mean, on an inflation, a normalized inflation and an after-tax rate, that's like a negative rate of return you're locking in for 30 years. That doesn't make much sense. So I think if you're, own, you're an owner of a longer-dated bonds or have longer-dated bond mutual funds, I think in 2021, that could clearly be a risk to a, uh, to a portfolio. Before we let you go, I know you believe that financial cyclicals, dividend yielding stocks are undervalued at the moment. You brought along a pick that I want to get to. You like Stag Industrial. This is an industrial REIT. Uh, full disclosure here, you own it. Tell us why you like it. Yeah, so we own this in our enhanced income strategy, which is where we're looking to get more income than bonds with less volatility than stocks. And the idea is Stag is a publicly traded REIT. And it's a, it's a mid-cap play in the industrial REIT space. So this is a, a prime beneficiary uh, to the e-commerce explosion uh, uh, that is happening and that will continue to happen. Amazon is their largest customer, but it's only about 2% of uh, total sales. So it's not an overly dominant play to their entire portfolio. So they're, they're very diverse from a revenue stream. They have a very strong balance sheet and a dividend yield of 4.75% uh, that they're covering very nicely. Uh, they have been doing acquisitions, strategic acquisitions over time to roll up uh, more square footage space, and we expect that to continue. But we think this is an underappreciated company within the industrial space and, and think that the, the wind is at its back from a trend standpoint. All right, John Petridis, Portfolio Manager at Tocqueville Asset Management. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me on.